I will touch base with our next speaker so we can get uh, we can continue with the presentation. Our next speaker is um, Somtochi on your query. Uh, I think I uh, a bit a story before she starts her session. I was at uh, KubeCon uh, Barcelona back in 2019 and. A number of us Nigerians and a couple of Africans, you know, we usually recognize ourselves as Africans anywhere we go. We met and was like trying to find other people that are, uh, that are at the event and doing awesome things within the ecosystem. And conversations started around how we can support each other within the ecosystem and also connect with other people. So when I joined uh, the a Kubernetes SIG meeting and I saw someone presenting. I looked at the name, some Tochi. Okay, this name sounds Nigerian. Immediately I went to look her up uh, uh, on Twitter and I was like, wow, now, now I person be this <laughs> doing great things and presenting in a SIG meeting. The SIG is special interest group. Uh, within the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem where people contribute to the main Kubernetes project. And recently I learned she has joined WeaveWorks, which was like, wow, that is that is awesome. So Somtochi is also a contributor to the Kubernetes project. She will be sharing with us how you also can contribute to Kubernetes. Over to you, uh, Somtochi. Um, yeah, uh, awesome. Okay. Um... Yeah, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, good morning. <laughs> I'm really excited to be talking today. Uh, I see like a lot of people are here and I'm definitely looking Yeah, I think we lost uh, some touches uh, video and audio, but we can see your screen. Uh, if you can unmute and share your video again. Yeah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. Yeah, okay, so I'll just go again. Um, Chi, I hope everyone can hear me. My name is Somto Chi um, on your query. I'm a developer experience at WeaveWorks. I work on their open source projects there. And you can always reach out to me at Twitter and GitHub at Somtochi Amar. And this talk is going to be around contributing to Kubernetes. At the end of this talk, I hope at least, even if it's just one person that gets to contribute to, to Kubernetes, like that would be just awesome. So basically I'm trying to push you guys to contribute to open source and in particular Kubernetes and yeah, I'm just going to walk you through the process and hopefully make it a bit easier for you to get started with that. Um, I'm going to try not to talk too much and try to get um, leave a lot of time for questions at the end. So yeah, in, sorry, uh, let me present this. Okay. So this is basically an outline of the talk. I'm going to tell you why and how to contribute to, um, to Kubernetes different groups in Kubernetes that make it work, um, how to select your first issue, how to make your first pull requests, you know, different mentoring programs, and also how to grow as a contributor in Kubernetes. I think all these are like important parts of how you can work yourself up to contributing to Kubernetes. So um, first off, I know a lot of people, um, I, I heard Bakari saying what Kubernetes is, so hopefully, most people here at least just have a general idea of what Kubernetes is. Um, in short, it is used for managing containers. It's called an, a container orchestration framework or platform. But I'm not here to talk so much about Kubernetes, but about contributing to it. So I'm going to tell you why. So I don't know if you know this meme here. It's basically something Unicode developer sees, um, a new day, another opportunity to be world class. So I think, um, a major reason I'll give you to contribute to 
Kubernetes is, is because you gain that work class, work class experience. There are a lot of experienced developers on Kubernetes. You have Googlers, you have people from AWS, Microsoft. There are a lot of you know big companies really investing engineers to contribute to Kubernetes. And when you start contributing to Kubernetes, you one way or the other, you have the opportunity to work with these people. They review your pull requests. And not just like on a code basis, right? You get to collaborate with people across different time zones, right? You learn how to communicate and how to collaborate with people who are not even around you. The, the community is also very active. The project has over 76 stars on GitHub. It's a very active project. They are like in the main repository, there are over a thousand pull requests open, like right now. There are a lot of people really focused on kubernetes a lot of companies you get to over time as you contribute to kubernetes you get to meet people you get to you know build your network you know outside where you are so i really think that um contributing to kubernetes has really helped me i think it will help anyone who actually says oh i want to contribute to this project i want to make changes and you know i want to be active i think if you try to contribute to kubernetes yeah you definitely get more experience and also a lot of companies hire around like kubernetes the infrastructure you understand it better and also there are like a lot of job opportunities to around kubernetes and you saying that oh i have contributed to kubernetes also looks great on your portfolio so um i'll i'll start out by saying that it's okay if you're a little confused or scared when you're starting out to contribute to kubernetes Frankly, it would be it would be weird if you weren't because Kubernetes is a large project. There are a lot of people. Sometimes you just look at it and you're like, you don't know where to start. So I think that's be, that was basically me when I started. I was like, whoa, whoa, this this project is like a lot. Like it's been there for a long time, and you have like people constantly contributing to it, changing stuff. And you're like, can I actually make a change here? Do you get? But like that's okay. I think that's our initial reaction when we are coming into something that is new, when we're stepping out of like what we're used to, when we're stepping out of our comfort zone. So I think even if you feel scared, even if you feel confused, that's not a reason not to do it. <laughs> uh, so I'm just basically here to tell you that if you're feeling scared, if you're feeling confused, that's fine. Um, you're not the first, you're not, you're not alone in that. Uh, I contribute to Kubernetes. And even now, sometimes I'm trying to contribute to like a new part of Kubernetes and I'm like, Oh, I'm not too sure what I'm doing, but I think you can actually work through the confusion and make a reasonable pull request. Like the thing is, if you make a pull request there, there are people reviewing your pull request and they won't let you just do anyhow. They will actually review it and say, okay, um, you didn't do this right. Or this is actually not where it's supposed to be. You have like some amount of guidance from the community. So I think you should take some comfort in that. So um, there are different ways to contribute to Kubernetes it doesn't have to be code. Uh, I I know there are a lot of programmers on here, but even if you don't write code, like that's okay. Kubernetes has a lot of documentation. If you're a technical writer, or even if you aren't, or you, you just think like, okay, I don't write code, but I think I might like to inc like write stuff. Um, their documentation is actually very extensive. They have like a blog post, they have like blog posts, they have like a full, whole website dedicated to Kubernetes because there are a lot of moving parts. So if you're good with writing or you could just try it out. Um, one thing I've learned is, you know, if, if you're just looking at an open source project and you feel like you're reading through the documentation and something's unclear and you think you can make it clearer, like just open a pull request for it. It doesn't matter like if you're not, if, if you don't think you're a fully qualified technical writer. So even if you do design, we have the CGUI which is um, for the Kubernetes dashboard, where it's like a dashboard to display some insights into what's going on in, in your cluster. You could also join in. Um, also, it's a very large community. There's always efforts for managing people, managing projects, managing the community. So if you think your projects, you are leaning towards project management or community management, like that's still great. There's definitely a space, a space for you. There's like the Kubernetes release theme, which sort of like coordinates um, Kubernetes releases that happen like four times every year. And, you know, it takes a lot of people. There's the release team is basically people managing like, oh, is this pull request going to get in before, you know, the, the release is ready? Does it need documentation? Checking in with people who are supposed to submit pull requests for these changes. So yeah, all those things are like project and community management. So if that's where you feel you can weigh in, like that's totally great. And also 
the main um, Kubernetes repository is written in Go. Um, and people have this mistaken uh, mindset that you have to know Go with, to contribute to Kubernetes. Well, I feel Go is definitely a plus. If you write something like Python, Java, we have client libraries in, uh, for Kubernetes that are written in those languages. Um, the Kubernetes website too is basically HTML and CSS. You can get started from there. There are a lot of testing that goes on, a lot of testing that goes on in Kubernetes. So you could also weigh in there. So yeah, I hope you're able. There are also marketing initiatives within the Kubernetes community. It's, it's a very large community. You know, they have social media. Like there are so many different ways to weigh in and. Just joining in the community, even if you don't code, is still going to be very valuable for you. So there are different groups in Kubernetes. You have the special interest groups, which are focused on a particular area in Kubernetes. Um, kubectl is the command line tool for interacting with Kubernetes API. And you the SIG, that special inter, inter interest group, CLI, is focused on like that and other CLI tools that are built around Kubernetes. You have C Contribex, which is focused on um, Kuban um, contributor experience. Um, Kubernetes is a very welcoming community. They um, put in some effort, a lot of efforts actually, to make as in contributing to Kubernetes, you know, a better experience. So there's a whole um, group dedicated to that, just trying to get people to contribute, trying to make sure it's, it's like a smooth experience. So there's, there's also something called working groups. These are not the only groups in Kubernetes, but these are probably the most relevant ones. Um, working, working groups are like much less, they are more temporary and they cut across multiple SIGs. Um, so something like the multi-tenancy work, working group is cut across SIG nodes, SIG storage, and like a bunch of other ones. So yeah, you can find out more about each SIG on the Kubernetes community repository. If you can, I hope my screen is clear enough, but I can see that there's a lot of like, there are different folders for each SIG, each of them sort of explaining what the SIG is about, um, how you can contribute to them and different stuff like that. So um, it also has the get the contributors guide, which is also, if you're just starting out, you should definitely read that. Uh, so this, this repository is basically like a treasure for someone who wants to contribute because you can really get a lot of information. Uh, you can read up of, on the different SIGs, the different working groups. UG uh, means user groups. So yeah, you can definitely just take a look at this repository, maybe spend some time trying to find out like what the different stuff is about. And you should get involved <laughs> with Kubernetes. So first, you should probably be on the Slack channel. You can invite yourself at the URL displayed on the screen, slack.khs.io. Uh, you should check out some SIGs. Um, try to find one that is aligned with, aligned with something you're interested in uh, or something that is related to your job. Or you know, just pick randomly if you don't know. Like You're not tied to a SIG. You can basically try out different SIG to find out, oh, OK, these are probably the, the ones like I like what they do, and I feel like I can contribute to them. You want to join their mailing list. You want to join their Slack channel. They are like each SIG has like a Slack channel where they discuss like issues focused on the area that they, they handle. So you should also try and join their meetings, which they try to make it at a very comfortable time for like everybody. Uh, so if you can, it might be late for you, it might not. So if you can't join their meeting times, you know, ask questions, introduce yourself. Most of them are welcoming contributors. Uh, most of them are actually excited to have people join them and be interested in what they do. So I'll definitely encourage you to do that. Then to make your first pull request, you have to pick an issue. So you can filter if you're unable to pick a SIG. Um, I think when I first started, I was not able to decide on which seat to contribute to. It was like still all new to me, but some people sort of like they know or it just caught their eye. So I started by filtering for good first issues and whole pointed issues and picking those up. Those were like low hanging fruits I could easily get started with. So you can filter um, the main repository for it. If you have decided on a SIG, it's most likely they have their own repository. So you can also go there. It doesn't have to be the main Kubernetes repository that you're contributing to. And even on the main Kubernetes repository, 
each each issue is labeled with the seek that is consigned with it. So you can actually filter by the seek that you want to. You can also ask the seek like, okay, you can join the channel, introduce yourself like, oh, I'm a new contributor. I'm looking to join your seek. I'm looking to pick one or two issues. Um, you you can like just ask like just communicate. Uh, you probably should not do that on the general channel, but the seek channels are actually good ways to also find out what impo what's important to the seek and you know those are probably the issues that that they try to you know get contributors for. Then you could read through the Kubernetes documentation and if you find small typos comments that you know you could actually it could, it could be as simple as, as that your first pull request doesn't have to be large it doesn't have to be this massive change most times you know you want to keep it small especially when you're starting and because you probably don't understand the whole system so you probably want to start small so updating if you see uh if you're reading through the documentation and, and you're like oh this could be explained better or that's a typo you can like you can just make a pull request for that and <clears throat> as simple as that your first pull request is in and then you grow from there. Uh, so there's a pull request process. Mm. You to get your pull request margin, you have to sign the contributor license agreement. It's not difficult to do. It's literally just like a couple of clicks. It's not it's not an extremely complicated process. It's just you just sign it. Then you need a Kubernetes member to apply the OK to test label on your you need a Kubernetes member to apply the okay to test label on your pull request. So it's basically saying like, okay, because a lot of tests run for each pull request to validate it and just to verify your changes. So it's exactly saying, okay, um, this pull request is like, you can you can run the test on it. Um, most of this, these labels, they're applied by the robot. So when a member comments something like this slash okay to test, on your pull request it means okay the robots now acts on that it applies the label and then you know allows the test to run so there's also something called um lgtm which means looks good to me is applied by a reviewer someone who has reviewed your, your changes uh, probably the person has made some comments you've responded to the changes and it's like okay your pull request is good like it looks good um i think you've done it, an okay job on this then the slash approve is saying oh it can get merged now so it says okay it basically means your work is done maybe maybe you have to rebase your pull requests and squash your commits but it means okay you're like your job is almost done you're almost there and then sometimes because of how big kubernetes is it might be you might make a pull request and not get some traction on it and that's okay there's something called the pr review channel for um it's called it's called PR review, so it's basically to sort of like get get more eyes on your pull request. So you can just like say, oh, I, I have this pull request. Um, can someone take a look? You know, and also um, the the robot tries to apply the correct um, seek that your change is associated with because they are going to be the ones to review it and approve it. So um, you can just join the SIG and say, oh, I have this pull request open. Is this something you guys want? Can someone take a look? And then as a last resort, you can also ping the person who opened the issue. If you are making a pull request for, for an issue, you can, okay, just ping the owner and say, okay, you made this issue and I, I just sort of opened the pull request for it and there's been like no traction in it so far. But I want to say that, I also want to say that when you, come, when you ping people on Slack, uh, they might be in different time zones. So if you don't get a reply immediately, that's absolutely fine. Um, you should probably just give it some time. The person might not be available. The person might be on vacation or, yeah, I'm just saying like, don't feel discouraged if you don't get an immediate response from people and, you know, try to communicate in the channels more than like DMs, unless if, you know, you guys have been communicating, communicating for some Yeah. Uh, so, if you don't get a, resp a response immediately, that's fine. The person might be in a different time zone. Maybe the person is even sleeping. So yeah, just apply some patience and definitely you will eventually get your pull, re pull request merged. So I want to spend some time talking about the contributor ladder. So once you make your first pull request, you're basically a contributor to, to Kubernetes. Oh, I 
forgot to put in the diagram. But yeah, your contributor to Kubernetes, then after some time, if you are active and you make more, more pull requests, you know, if you join like the release team and become a shadow, which is so, sort of someone that um, shadows the release leads and like helps out with other tasks, um, such like active involvement with the community actually pushes you to become, a, it's like it helps you become a member. For you to become a member, you need like two community members to like okay you sort of. So that would be tough if you're actually being active, you know, you actually get to meet people as you make pull requests, join meetings, join the SIG. So definitely one or two people, you definitely, it shouldn't be too difficult people, too, too difficult to find two people from two different companies that will like say, okay, I think she's doing a great, con she's doing a great job, like she should be a member. Then the next step is like your reviewer means you get to review other people's pull requests and apply the LGTM label on different pull requests. So each repo has like different people that are reviewers and approvers, like it's, it's, it's not across like the whole organization. It's more like scoped to like a, a particular repository. So yeah, if you're active in a SIG and you're making a lot of changes and you're really knowledgeable about what's going on there, they can easily, you can actually just request, oh, I want to be a reviewer. And, you know, if the the leads of the SIG can see your contribution, they, they will probably make you one. The next step is you can be an approver where you actually get to say, okay, this pull request looks good enough to be merged in the repository. There's also like co-chairs of committees, there are SIG leads. Uh, so yeah, I think like it's a great way, like you can definitely see yourself progressing. And I just want to say that you don't have to pressure yourself. This is just the ladder, but it's not like you, you can't like, like, for me, I've been contributing to Kubernetes for like over a year. I'm, I'm a member. I'm not a reviewer in any repository yet. It's, it's just like you can do it in your own time. There's no pressure and you don't have to say, okay, this week I want to be a reviewer. Next week I want to be an approver. It's not like they're not goal posts. It's basically just something that happens over time as you become more and more active in the Kubernetes community. So yeah, I'm just going to go over that again. It's good to progress your contributions in the community you should not just do it because you want to be a reviewer you want to be an approver i think that's a wrong motivation just be active care about the parts that you're doing and i think these things just come with time so yeah uh i want to round up by talking about mentorship programs for different people so there is google sum of code google sum of code is how personally i start contributing to Kubernetes. Uh, I wanted to apply um, to a Kubernetes project under the CNCF. So I'll definitely encourage students to apply for Google Sum of Code. It was like a great experience for me all around. Like one of my mentors was, was a Googler. The other one worked that we've worked. We are, we are working now. So I think if you're a student, you should definitely apply. But I want to also add in that the applications are closed right now, I think. But if you start apply, if you start contributing to Kubernetes now, and you know you try to grow your contribution um, contributions now, you get like a very nice margin over other applicants because you're familiar with what's going on. So if you can start contributing now, don't wait till like next year when the new application starts. So if you can start contributing now, please do so. I and also just also for the benefits of you know learning and growing your skills there are other ones there's the lfx mentorship there's outreachy there's google season of docs for people who are technical writers yeah so just check in on any of them there's a rep a repository where you can you know see the different mentoring programs that have linked there so yeah i think coming under a mentorship program is also great you can also contribute outside of this mentorship program it doesn't have to be but some of them are paid and I think it can be quite encouraging just to be paid for like contributing to open source. Yeah, it could be like a great way to start off. Uh, so I want to summarize by saying you can become a contributor to Kubernetes. It's not that difficult. I know it could be like very challenging at first, but I, it gets easier. You pick an issue, you work towards it, you try and communicate with people, you join a SIG, 
and you know try and become an active contributor so i'm going to end now you should take a look at the contributor contributing guide that the contribex members have put together which is very very helpful for new contributors there's also a contributor cheat sheet where you can get a lot of insights to like what just goes on as a contributor yeah so i've linked both of them i think these are very active and very helpful links and you should definitely check them out and you can also reach out to me i'm on kubernetes slack twitter github Sontochi ama yeah just connect and if you need anything just reach out so um i'm excited to take in your questions now Uh, can anybody hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, okay, let me stop sharing. We don't currently have any questions in the chat. Okay. Let me check the chats if we have questions. Um, okay, we don't have any questions in the chat uh, yet. Uh, awesome presentation. Um, one question I uh, would like to ask is, um, you know, sometimes when you want to contribute to Kubernetes, it has a lot of paths when you want to get started. Yeah. Sometimes you have no idea, okay, where should I start from? Is it docs? Is it uh, um, the Helm charts? Is it which one? So. What advice will you have for someone that, okay, just goes to the project and wants to start? Where exactly should they start from? Oh, you can you can start from the Kubernetes main repository. That's the, they call it K slash K. That's Kubernetes, github.com slash Kubernetes slash Kubernetes. You try and filter for good first issues, help wanted issues. Uh, that's, you can just basically kick it off like that. If you are coming from maybe you build a lot of CLI tools, then you should check out six CLI since that will be more aligned with your, with your interests. So you'll probably get to work on the kubectl command line tool. If you come, if you're writing a lot of documentation, you should definitely join SIG Docs. Ask them, oh, I'm a new contributor. I'm looking to join you guys. You know, where can I get started? Yeah. And if if as in if you don't know what else to do, then just join the SIG Contribex. They try to, they also try to make it easy for new contributors to get started. Like they have a lot of like very low, like it's easy to make pull requests to that community repo. They have like just like docs and stuff like that. So I think at the, as a last resort, you can actually just join Contribex and say, okay, I want to be a contributor. Okay, awesome. So that's Contribex is like, uh, is Contribex like, uh, where someone that doesn't have any experience with code or anything and doesn't even have an idea where to start, Contribus is the best place for them to start. Yeah, I, I, I think that's, that's, that's okay. You can join them because they are basically around making the contributor experience easier and smooth. So you probably get some, some, like, some help and direction from them. Okay, awesome. We have a question for Sebastian who is watching from YouTube. He says, what would be the future you would want to see in the next Kubernetes release? Uh, features. Yeah, like, because I've been a, re, um, a there are like a couple of, of release features that I was looking forward to get matched, but it didn't because the people that are working on them probably didn't have the bandwidth to get them in. But basically, if you go to, if you're curious, if you're more curious about about um, different like feature proposal. There's something called Kubernetes enhancements, which are basically like proposals people make for like new features in Kubernetes. Uh, so let me get a link. Sorry, a second. Mm. So yeah. Let me see. So there's this. Okay, uh, let me copy the link. Okay. I don't know, I'll just paste it in this chat. Yeah, so, I'll send it there, I can yeah. add it to So those are the enhance enhancements, you can like check the features there, like read up, probably it comes, it, most times it comes with like extensive documentation on what new features the ones added or what 
enhanced. For me, there's this Cube CTL debug feature that I'm looking forward to. It's been open for some time, but I'm looking forward to it getting like some traction in the community. And also most of also some features around cluster add-ons, but it's not it's not related to the main Kubernetes repository. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I think he just responded back. He said, uh, yeah, he gets it, but okay, yeah. I think he he, he, he added a comment again, based okay. on the last thing you mentioned. At first he okay. asked, yeah, but is there a feature that you would love to see, even if it doesn't exist yet? Okay. But when you mentioned kubectl debug, he, okay. I think he kind of got, got it. So um, we don't have any other questions in uh, oh, okay. um, yeah, on YouTube chat. And, uh, I can see okay. one question yeah. on here. So if you're interested in documentation, please join Seek Docs. I think it's, very, it's a very active Seek. They do stuff across different um, documentation, you know, the blog post and stuff like that. So if you join um, Seek Docs, you definitely get some guidance on how to get started. So I would say what you should do now is join the Slack and join Seek Docs and introduce yourself. You can also take a look at um, the Kubernetes website repo and see what open, if there are any open documentation issues. They are normally labeled like documentation so that people know. Uh, let me see, this is the website repo. So, but Seek Docs is definitely the way to go for people who are interested in contributing. Yeah, okay. Someone just posted the link. So yeah, I just want to reinforce that it doesn't have to be code. Even if you don't write code, that's okay. There are definitely different ways that you can contribute in the Kubernetes community. Awesome. Yeah, I think we've uh, we've reached the time limit for the session. Thank you very much for the awesome presentation, Sumtachi. And please, yeah, what's your Twitter handle? I think uh, people should be able to follow um, you and uh, learn from your post online. Yeah, at, at Sumtachi Ama. OK, yeah. if you can drop it in the chat, I will okay. add it on the. OK, I will do that. Awesome, thank you and uh, thank you. Bye.